Through my first evaluation question, I'll be analysing certain parts of my film and stating how it uses, develops or challenges forms and conventions of real media products. The beginning of our film starts simply, lacking cinematic effects and stating quite simply the name of the film. The expected conformist introduction would be long with editing techniques and superimposed text, like highly budgeted Hollywood films including American Beauty and Zombieland. Although Zombieland has an incredible introduction, the name of the film, interlinked with the film itself, with the camera work, evidently presents the theme of the film being based upon zombies. This is an example of exposition with the background storytelling before the plot actually being the point where the film starts, while our film leads straight into the plot. Our film juxtaposed with this simply and boldly stating the name of our film, which leaves the audience to predict for themselves what is likely to happen within the film and what the name of the film means. This is an enigma code with the film title with a different introduction, creating interest for the audience and making them slightly uneasy and shocked due to challenging what they initially expected. The first shot begins with a close-up of the protagonist's face, but the real focus on the eerie music played in the background. This conforms to what the audience is likely to expect with foreign and different music, which they can therefore link to a different environment and way of life. This then interlinks with the subtitles used and the foreign accent behind the subtitles. The audience can then link this to the kidnapping and then make the connection that perhaps this is a terrorist film. In the background of our film, there is also a banner written in Arabic. We are not showing any prejudice to Middle Eastern people, believing they are all ter terrorists, but rather simply making, making and adding to what the audience already know upon stereotypes, so there is no confusion. This is similar to the film Iron Man, where the key character is taken hostage and the terrorists are filming him for ransom. Although the writing does not mean anything, it still emphasises the fact that this film relates to terrorism, which is a re recurring theme recognisable through modern events such as 9-11 and is featured in films including Zero, to Zero Dark Thirty and also the World Trade Centre. With advancements in technology, including handheld cameras, there has been a rapid increase in the amount of POV filming in the media industry. Within our film, we use the handheld camera, which helps the audience to identify and understand the chaotic situation which characters are in. This is identical and so conforms to the film Cloverfield, using this camera technique to further the audience's participation as it, is, as it is as if they were within the film and in the heads of the characters. A POV perspective to emphasise the suspense situation is a common convention within films and is also featured in the Blair Witch Project. This continuous filming, filming with a lack of post-editing follows one of our final shots with the protagonist saved by his partner. The shot is continuous from the character's perspective, leaving the room and picking up a weapon, Following this will be the continuous shot of the protagonist's POV perspective, which is blurred to emphasise the confusion the character faces. This is similar to one of the recent shots in Cloverfield. Following this, in the second scene, there is also another challenging convention we've used in our film. The series of shot reverse shot camera techniques is similar to other films, but the commodity, i.e. the contents of the briefcase, is completely hidden. This is a continuous enigma for the audience, where they are left to decide and imagine what is in the briefcase, allowing a more interesting and enjoyable viewing experience. This, with the title, does not give any clues about what is the commodity, which is very similar to Tarantino's classic film, Pulp Fiction, where the whole film is based around a particular briefcase. A final convention that we have challenged in our production would be how the torture scene in our film is actually direct and does not show the brutality of the torture. This challenged the thriller and horror genre, leaving it to the imagination and use of sophisticated match-cut contrasting with the drawn-out gore of Hostage and Saw. Another scene in our film which effectively evokes interest due to its challenging of modern media would be when the film is taken through a flashback of previous events and the camera work is then featured in black and white. Although this is unexpected, with advances in such high-quality colour filming, it is also very similar to high-budget Hollywood films including James Bond, Casino Royale, starting with a black and white contrast of colours. Initially, the audience feel alarmed and unable to understand the reasoning behind the colour, similar to that in Van Helsing. But over time, the audience come to realise from the upcoming events that the film is based upon the past. This ultimately brings greater understanding for the audience upon the plot and are therefore able to understand the reasoning for this lack of colour. This recognises the visual code of black and white for a flashback. Spielberg's Schindler's List also conforms to this, artistically using it to deepen the impact of the World War II story. Modern audience members see previous wars through black and white photographs and film, and so it would seem confusing to see this in a different light. Although it may seem unrealistic, other, film, other films, including more films, use the opposite being featured throughout in full, in full colour, like Saving Private Ryan. 
Furthermore, another specific reasoning for this sparing of colour would be our need to emphasise the narrative as the plot develops from the conversation between the two characters have. We did, we did not want the audience to become confused, so with a lack of colour, the interest is solely upon the two characters' conversation. The close-up shots with the black and white technique also provides an even greater position to see the emotions of the characters and the fear that they are in.